Okay. So welcome everybody to this uh, future, uh, Pages ECM webinar. Today it is something new for us and we are so excited because we are going to hear a really amazing talk about something that should be an opportunity for all of us that we are easier that we are expecting or waiting something for the future. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, almost all of us, we are going to find here an opportunity in our future. So first, uh, I'm going to introduce our talks that are from different organizations. The first research that we are going to hear is Angelo Carmelianji, that he is marine geologist at National Institute of Oceanography and Applied Physics in Italy. He is, is a chair uh, in the eco science. And then we are going to hear uh, from Thomas Wiesberg that he is from the International Continental Scientific Training Program, ICTP, and he's chemist by training, interested in the geochemistry of fluids and gases, particularly noble gases in fault zones and volcanoes, and he's really involved in the scientific drilling projects of the ICDP. Then uh, we are going to hear the both of their talks, and then we are going to have a question and answer sessions that please you could use the chat and just please specify to who is the question or if it's from of the both of them, okay? So Angelo, please, when you will be able to, sure. Yes, uh, thank you. Let me yeah, find uh, how to share my screen. Okay, so good, uh, what to say, good afternoon, at least for my time here. Uh, good good uh, evening or good morning for those who are in other parts of the world. Um, I'm really glad to, to be able to share some time with you talking about scientific ocean drilling that has been guiding my professional career since I was a master student. And now I, I do the first digression that I had not planned, but I, while uh, you were presented, I, I remember that I, I left to the US, I'm Italian, I studied in Milan um, with, uh, within the famous school of uh, biostatigraphy, Maria Bianca Cita, Isabella Fremoli, Elisabetta Erba, those of this field may, may know them. I'm not a biostatigrapher. I never studied micropaleontology or biostatigraphy. But I, I, I was hearing a lot about uh, scientific drilling. And uh, I was so fascinated by this idea of uh, drilling into the bottom of the ocean that I applied uh, uh, as a student to go to Texas A&M, where the program was managed at the time. And I started to work as a technician, then I sailed as a scientist, that it happened that I was invited as a co-chief scientist and more or less throughout the 30 years of my following career, PhD and postdoc, and then contract as a researcher, I've always been involved in various phases. So I sort of wish you can also do the same. So this is a good wish for the start of the presentation. I, I share these slides with you also on behalf of Hanno Kinkel, who is the ESSAC science coordinator. ESSAC is the ECORD uh, Science Support and Advisory Committee. And ECORD is the European Consortium for Ocean Research Drilling. So the European countries, there are many different, uh, different funding schemes uh, participate in the scientific drilling program as a consortium. They share resources, uh, management uh, operations, and they, and they participate uh, in, in this. And uh, they, there is a scientific committee that I have the pleasure to chair since uh, the beginning of this year. Okay, um, yeah, Fernanda, please, when we get close to the 30 minutes, uh, give me a ring uh, because uh, I may have to to shorten the talk. I don't want to speak more than 30, 35 minutes. Um, 
the International Ocean Discovery Program, as it is named uh, at the moment, uh, is, uh, is uh, um, the present phase that you see here in, uh, I should start, uh, sorry, I have to get organized. I should start the, uh, the laser pointer here. Yeah, uh, let me go back a second. Okay. Um, it is the present current phase of the program here in blue in the time arrow here. Uh, this phase started in 2013. Um, in general, the phases are 10 years long each because the contracts uh, to operate the vessels in general are made by 10 years. And altogether, the scientific ocean drilling is the biggest and longest living international program in earth science. So since 1958, there are scientists that started in the US, but then rapidly enlarged to many other countries all around the world, decided to share platforms uh, to drill the bottom of the ocean to study the history of the earth from the marine record, of course. Um, it started very early after the Second World War when the money for research was, was uh, given to space scientists because the space was uh, uh, strategic for the developing for the countries after the war. And some people decided that not only space, also our Earth, and they wanted to reach the, the moho. The moho is the transition between the crust and the mantle. They, they hired a, a very primitive uh, uh, offshore re, uh, drilling research vessel that you see here, uh, the CAS-2, that's the name. Uh, they failed because the technology was not good enough. Then they rethought a bit of, of the uh, objectives and they hired a new vessel at the time, new in 68, the Glomar Challenger that you may have heard about. This was a, 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 a huge advance in the knowledge of the, of the planet. From 68 to 83, this ship drilled uh, the oceans uh, almost everywhere, including the Antarctica, uh, mostly for paleoceanographic uh, objectives. Ocean history was uh, the main objective, not the only, but the main objective. Then. Technology evolved in, 2000, in 1985. Um, they abandoned this vessel. They made a contract with another operator. And these were done by NSF in the US. And they hired uh, the, the Joydis Resolution, this vessel that is still working today. The ODP Ocean Drilling Program started until 2023. So these were two phases of 10 years. Then, and the, and the vessel was only one until now until then. Then in 2003, something happened. The Japanese community included a new drilling vessel for riser drilling, so able to control the fluids and to go deeper and stay longer on site. And the Europeans, the consortium of the e uh, provided vessels that could operate where the other two vessels, the Joydis Resolution and the Japanese vessel that is called Chikyu, could not go shallow water, then I'll tell you more in detail. And then the last, uh, the current phase starting in 2013 without major changes. And now we are approaching the end of the program, 2023, that we know already it will be extended by one year. And then we don't know really what, uh, what will follow. Uh, before telling you about uh, the present and the future, I want to emphasize that uh, um, uh, my, my, sorry, my, well, anyway, uh, uh, the scientific ocean drilling program allowed the recovery of more than 490 kilometers of sediment cores, recovered cores and geophysical data that had yielded insight into first order questions about how uh, our planet works. So history of the ocean, uh, subduction, uh, rifting, uh, evolution of glacial margins, provided the earth, ocean, and life science communities access to the subsea floor 
not achievable in any other way because it is true that oil companies drill the bottom of the ocean, but they usually don't take samples unless in small specific places. The program involved more than 5,000 scientific participants from all around the globe. The production, scientific production were more than, more than one, what is it, 11,000 peer reviewed publications, of which about 500 in, in, in journals, generic in journals like Nature and Science. And very important, allow the training of the next generation of geoscientists. Me, 30 years ago, and you uh, now, I hope, and across at least two generations, and we are approaching the third generation now. Okay. Uh, each phase of the program has a science framework. So there is a booklet that I invite you to download and read because they are excellent uh, um, uh, summaries of uh, the open questions that we have uh, for our planet. The present day for the future, so it, it started uh, last year and we go until 2050, is called the 2050 Science Framework. You can download it in different uh, versions, like a summary or the full version. It, it, it has a strategy and a vision. Um, most important, let, let me get rid, if I can, of the window venue. Well, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, the enduring principle are something that are very important. So the program wants to continue to provide open access to samples and data. Open access, it means that you log on a web page and you download the data collected after one year of moratorium of, after the drilling. The measurements are standardized. Uh, the proposal, so the science that is uh, done by the project is bottom up. So any scientist can propose science. It's not that the funding agency tell the scientists what to do. It's the scientists have ideas, they propose it, propose them, they go through a review process. And if they are found uh, of global importance, then, then the program will uh, implement the proposals uh, with the various drilling vessels. There is a transparent uh, regional planning of the activities. Um, uh, safety is, uh, is uh, taken care uh, uh, through a, a very specific site characterization to avoid uh, environmental issues, uh, problems, for example. Um, there is a regular assessment of the framework and uh, it is a collaborative and inclusive international program enhancing diversity. So anyone can really has opportunities to attend. Then there are objectives, flagship initiatives, you see, and enabling elements that I want to specify here. The objectives now are streamlined into seven that you see there, habitability of life on earth, the oceanic life cycle of the tonic plates, earth climate system, feedbacks in earth system, tipping points in ocean his in earth history, global cycles of energy and matter and natural hazard impacting on society. Very broad, I, I quickly checked uh, with uh, Hanno Kinkel uh, uh, pages and the subgroups uh, and uh, I guess they fit most of them, at least the, the one we found and we uh, add in this slide with many ob objectives. So I'm pretty sure that pages can uh, uh, implement uh, its science a lot uh, through scientific drilling, ocean and also continental, we'll see later. Um, regarding the flagship initiatives, these are new. They were not present in the previous science plans. And um, you can also see that the flagship initiatives are very broad and, and, and can accommodate very nicely the pages uh, scientific objectives. Uh, this will be initiatives of many proposals coordinated uh, for a long-term uh, achievement of the objectives, 10, 20 years, even more. And they will be implemented by organizing workshops, uh, uh, seminars uh, in which uh, uh, you will be able to participate. But the start of this implementation is still away in time. And then there are enabling elements 
like uh, the broader impacts and outreach, the land to sea concept that is important. I will come back to this. Uh, terrestrial to extraterrestrial, that is, let's keep an eye on what happens on the planets of our solar system and uh, exchange uh, information with uh, other communities because we are one of the planets. So other planets can teach us about the Earth and vice versa. And then uh, technological development and big data analytics. The amount of data generated by the program is huge and data science is becoming important. Okay, at present, we have the Americans, NSF, providing the Joydis resolution, the Japanese, providing the CQ and equal providing any other vessels. And these are the three operators of the program. And then there are additional funding partners that do not operate vessels, but contribute to the program. And, and this is China with the Ministry of Science and Technology, Austra the Consortium of Australia and New Zealand, ANZIC, India, with the Ministry of, of uh, Science and the Korean Institute of Geoscience and Mineral Resources. There was Brazil, but the Brazil for a number of reasons pulled out, uh, I think last year from the program. So this is today. So if you come from any of this scientific community, you will have an office uh, of, of IODP in your country where to ask for information uh, and, and, and find your opportunities besides ECOR Japan and, uh, and US. The future in post 2004 is uh, still under, under debate. We may continue with one program like uh, until now, there may be multiple, multiple programs and there may be alliances or one big alliance of different programs. Uh, this is in the in the pipeline. Uh, uh, yesterday we had uh, that webinar that you have been uh, um, notified uh, and there will be another tomorrow at 10 o'clock European time uh, uh, illustrating how Europe and Japan have already decided to proceed together in a single program as a one member of a possible alliance. But this is for the future. You will know more. Uh, in now I would like to spend uh, the remaining time on the opportunities that we as ECORD offer to scientists and especially young scientists within the mission specific platform concept uh, that uh, it will become more important in the future than in the past because this is because the Joy this resolution riserless drilling vessel is, is going toward the end of her career because it is 45 years old and may not be able to continue already in 2025 and for sure not beyond 2028. So the remaining drilling will be primarily done in mission specific platform form. So with the help of David McInroy, that is uh, the director of the science operator of ECOR, and Chibert Kamwan, who is the director of the ECOR managing agency. I show, share with you these slides. Uh, why mission specific? Because there are places where the big drilling vessel cannot go. That is shallow water. Shallow means less than 90 meters. If there is a bridge, let's, for example, the Black Sea, you, you cannot go under with a derrick as tall as the one of the main drilling vessels. Uh, you cannot go in ice covered uh, waters in the Arctic and in Antarctica. And sometimes there are lithologies, very tough lithologies like uh, sandy sediments, loose uh, uh, sediments, uh, coral reef uh, sediment that need special coring tools that you cannot have on this major drilling vessel. In that case, ECORD hired a vessel from the industry just for the purpose of implementing one expedition. And uh, I see going on. Okay. Uh, for example, um, uh, and this has been in the past, uh, I'm sorry. In the future, we plan that uh, mission specific could be implemented also for deep water drilling 
traditionally done by the other vessels because if the dry disk resolution will not be available we need to continue drilling in deep water in low latitude waters and so there are vessels in the on the market like the Fugro synergy drilling vessel the dina polaris that has been already now will be used uh, already for arctic drilling uh, or any other riser drilling vessels like these taken just uh, randomly from the market, normally used for oil and gas drilling. And we would hire them not to look for oil and gas. Please don't have any doubts. We avoid oil and gas when we drill because we don't want interference of oil and gas. So we drill only where someone has certified that there is no oil and no gas. But the technology is the same. So sometimes we have to cooperate with oil and gas industry um, without uh, diverting our objectives, of course. And the mode of drilling uh, will also be different because on the dry disk resolution you have, and on the GQ, the too big uh, drilling vessel, you have a a whole laboratory uh, analytical facility uh, system on board to process the data. The vessels that ECORD hires do not have that. So there is a limited amount of analytical work done at sea. So fewer number of scientists going on the vessel to do a minimum amount of uh, uh, analysis. Then the cores are stored, shipped to Bremen in Bremen at Marum University of Bremen, there is a core repository. The cores go there. And then there is a second expedition. It's an onshore science party where many scientists stay for one month or two months working in shifts, splitting the cores, sampling, and doing all the analysis that were usually done on the ship. So a few months later, you end up with a set of uh, analytical work done on the course nearly identical to the one that you have on the main uh, drilling vessels only shifted in time by a few months and uh, what has been done by ecord uh, uh, in the last uh, yeah, 20 years are these uh, expeditions hiring you see very different types of vessels including platforms uh, drilling uh, from the chick um, uh, impact crater in the Gulf of Mexico to the margin of uh, New Jersey, Australia, and lately Japan uh, for the paleoseismological research. And uh, there was a cruise planned for this e summer in, uh, in the Arctic, but it has been postponed uh, by two to three years. And please note that uh, some of these vessels, like this one, the James Cook, and the Kaimei in Japan are not drilling vessels. So you can use either piston or gravity coring techniques or seafloor drills. So a drilling system that goes to the bottom of the ocean, it's an automated drilling system uh, to provide uh, special samples. And in the future, there may be possibilities to use uh, new vessels coming into the uh, panorama of the academics, uh, the Australian Antarctic Division uh, Nuina vessel that I think it will come uh, into force uh, next year or so. The new uh, UK vessel, uh, the Sir David Atterboro. Then uh, Jamstack is in Japan. The J Japanese uh, Oceanographic Institution is building a new uh, research icebreaker or new moored uh, barges that can be hired uh, from the market or others like this that can be taken apart, uh, shipped into containers uh, around the uh, globe and put together to drill uh, specific uh, objectives. So very um, flexible, modular, uh, a la carte uh, system of drilling uh, as opposed to the traditional drilling with a fixed uh, platform. In this framework, uh, IODP and, uh, ICD, uh, and ICDP, or let's say ECORD and uh, ICDP, are collaborating more and more to develop uh, what I mentioned before, the land to sea drilling strategy. That is, you may have scientific objectives uh, to meet by drilling in a margin deep, uh, close to the shore and onshore. 
like in this case of a proposal for the Newfoundland uh, margin. And in that case, uh, the two programs can implement uh, jointly uh, uh, activities. Not easy. There are a few cases uh, that are coming up, but it is possible and the two communities would like to do this. Um, okay, the timeline I think I can skip. Uh, so the key messages about uh, mission specific is that uh, mm, they will continue to offer opportunities to drill all around the globe. Uh, they will expand the domains traditionally covered by IODP. Um, they will be sourced as needed. No major infrastructures maintained because we hire vessels uh, every time and then we release them. The coring methods can be chosen according to the scientific requirements. Um, they, we can uh, accommodate novel instrumentation and we will continue to offer as many possibilities and levels of collaboration, including the, the land to sea initiatives. Now going to the concrete part of what one uh, researcher can do is, uh, is the following list. And you can go to the eCord uh, webpage uh, that you see here. You can subscribe to the eCord news and you will receive all the calls for applications, opportunities to participate. In. So you will be alerted every time there is an opportunity. The opportunities are defined, divided in two types. You can lead initiatives or you can participate. So the leading, uh, that also early career scientists can do, and, and we promote the leadership level of early career scientists, maybe together with a, with a experienced scientist. Uh, for example, you can uh, uh, apply for funding for a Magellan class workshop with a proposal, because you have an idea and you want to gather people to see whether from that idea you can develop a drilling proposal. This is a joint ICDP core initiative. And the, and the calls are once a year generally in, uh, in January. And lately we are duplicating the calls because we want to promote new ideas for the future MSP proposals. So you can either propose a workshop or you can then, when a proposal written by someone else is approved, you can apply to attend. And for example, there is one application open for a, a workshop uh, to be held in uh, Portugal on, on uh, hazards. Uh, I don't remember the deadline, but you, you, you can find it. Then you can lead a drilling proposal or you can participate in a drilling proposal. Uh, once you've passed the Magellan Plus proposal or you had an idea, you decide to write a proposal. There are guidelines, uh, uh, deadlines uh, twice a year to submit a proposal, a pre-proposal generally first, and then a full proposal if it is uh, uh, evaluated well. And then you go several meetings until eventually you are funded. Then there are... Uh, uh, when a proposal written by others where you're not involved uh, is... Uh, uh, approved, you can apply as an offshore scientific party member or an onshore scientific party member. So you can go and every time we staff a research expedition, for example, ECOR has now on average seven scientists on the join this resolution. Uh, we make sure that out of these seven, there is at least one PhD student, one postdoc, and others, among which can be more PhD student or postdoc. So at least uh, the three categories of senior scientists, PhD students and postdocs are represented always. So there are concrete opportunities to go. And then if you don't have, uh, if you're not uh, accepted, not because you're not good, but only because we need to represent the national quota depending on how many people are paying, uh, how much uh, the, the funding agency are paying, uh, you can always request samples and do your research on the samples after the cruise, okay? And then there are uh, opportunities to, for training um, that are e the summer schools, e training courses, research grants, and scholarship. I tell you something and then you find everything on our webpage. 
ECORD offers, uh, except for the COVID period, uh, normally three, every year, three summer school. One in Leicester in the UK on uh, downhole logging for those who are geophysicists or interested in, in borehole logging. One in Bremen with a changing topic. Uh, this year, it will be in September. There is the application open to go. Will be on sea level, on sea level, uh, a record of sea level changes in the, in the marine sediments. And then there is the Urbino Paleoceanography Summer School um, uh, uh, in Urbino, in, in Italy. Um, and these are always. Then occasionally there are new schools offered. Then there is uh, a training course offered again by Marum and University of Bremen. And um, that is the virtual ship experience. So you go there and you basically redo everything is normally done on the ship, but you do it in the lab because they have the course, they have the instruments and you, you play back a cruise and you learn a lot how to process uh, data and interpret the core uh, sediment core record. And then we give out a grant uh, of 3000 euros to anyone who would like to make a sample request or do some analytical work on, on, on samples derived uh, or data derived from uh, uh, eCourt uh, uh, course or IODP course. So 3000 euros that you can use for traveling to one institute and do analysis, or you stay in your institute and you, with that money, you pay the analysis uh, that you do. Uh, it is not money to go to, to meetings uh, or this, just to do uh, uh, research. Then uh, we will restart this year the Distinguished Lecturer Program. So we ask uh, scientists, as you can see from the last ones, that, that they can also be young scientists. To, to tour uh, Europe, uh, giving a, a lectures on, on a scientific theme that derived from a participation to a cruise. Uh, and you can either uh, apply to give a lecture or you can apply to receive the lecture in your institute. So you ask uh, that uh, this or that uh, uh, lecture seminar is, is given to your institute and, and the person will come with the money you don't have to pay anything and the lecture will be given in your institute. And I encourage you to do that as soon as we publish the call. Um, and then for those who are interested in uh, outreach uh, uh, and communication, there are other, uh, there are expedition blogs, uh, there are uh, even display material. There is replicas of course in plastic uh, that they're really reproduce very well the real sediment cores that you can uh, ask uh, and there will be a puffer sphere that is an interactive sphere that will be uh, become uh, available soon uh, uh, this year so with all said uh, um, i hope that with this brief overview you had a feeling of what we do feel free to explore the web all the information is available Follow us first, so you don't miss opportunities and uh, participate. And for any doubt, uh, you can write to the ESAC uh, web uh, email address that was in the first uh, slide. Uh, and uh, either myself or Hanno Kinka will be happy to, uh, to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Angelo. Uh, so Thomas, please. Angelo, could you please stop scaring the uh, Yes. I, ah, there, I couldn't find the button. There it is. It's all yours. Thank you. Uh, oops. Just a second. I'm looking for my presentation. There it is. Can you see my presentation, the presentation mode? I see. Perfect. OK, thank you. Uh, and thank you to giving me <clears throat> the opportunity to introduce the International Continental Scientific Training Program, the ICDP, Achievements, Goals, and How to Get Involved. And um, my name is Thomas Wiersberg, and as already mentioned uh, by uh, 
Fernanda, uh, uh, I have a background in gas and fluid geochemistry. But about 20 years ago, I was working as a postdoc and was first getting in touch with scientific drilling, with continental scientific drilling. And uh, I did for several postdoc projects research related to ICDP drilling projects. And then about 10 years ago, I changed the site from being a scientist involved in ICDP projects, working for the ICDP directly. And here I'm mainly in charge of education, outreach, capacity building, and things like that. And what you see here, by the way, is not a photo from an ICDP site. This is a drill rig that drilled the nine kilometer borehole in Germany the so-called KTB. And this project in the late 80s, early 90s was more or less the, how to say, godmother or godfather of any ICDP projects. Because based on the experience that was gained from this project, the decision was made that we need an international program to foster and to, uh, let's say, focus on continental scientific drilling. And that was more or less the time where ICDP was born. ICDP was born in 1996. And in a nutshell, ICDP, it's a non-profit research organization to support scientists with a critical need for continental scientific drilling. And ICDP is proposal driven. Scientists from ICDP member countries are invited to submit proposals to request financial and operational support. So there is one big difference between ICDP and IODP. IODP drills for you. ICDP provides you at least partly the funding that you can drill. You at the end are in charge of the drilling, of course, with our support and help, but you are the one to make the drilling and to get your samples and you have the full control but also the full responsibility about the projects. And the history of ICDP, you see here 27 years of ICDP. We have in the meanwhile drilling more than 50 sites worldwide and more than 80 workshops have been held. We are making training courses and more than 500 scientists have been trained so far. And more than 1,000 peer-reviewed papers have been published from ICDP projects. So you see, the numbers are a little bit lower than the numbers from IODP. So we are not uh, we are not that old. We are just 27 years old, and we are a little bit the let's say the how to say the little brother of IODP, so to say, the little brother of IODP on the continent. So where is the money coming from that we are spending mostly for drilling? So ICDP has currently 21 member countries, plus the UNESCO as associated member. And these member countries that provide an annual fee, an annual budget that creates the ICDP budget. And from this budget, more than 90% are going back to the science community for drilling. And only about 10% are, for instance, for training courses, for outreach measures, and a little bit also for internal issues. But most of the money is really going back to you, to the scientists, to the scientific community, to support you for drilling. And you see the ICDB member countries here. And uh, the benefits of coming from an ICDP member countries are here listed, so only scientists from ICDP member countries can submit proposals to the ICDP and act as principal investigator. The scientists from ICDP member countries, they have the priority access to data and sample repositories during the moratorium phase. They are also preferentially selected for ICDP workshops and trainings, which does not mean that you're not getting selected if you're not coming from an ICDP member country, but there is a preference for applications from ICDP member countries. Scientists from ICDP member countries can also request service from the operational support group, for instance, equipment, 
you have a seat and a vote in the decision-making ICDP panels and you kind of determine the strategy and the direction of the program. So you determine the policy, the funding strategy, and also the individual grant choices. Well, the research that we are, or let's say the research that ICDP projects are following is, um, is uh, summarized here in our new science plan that was released in 2020. And we have four different topics and that all flies under the umbrella term of billions of years of earth evolution. And the four topics that, uh, the four key topics are georesources, environmental change, geohazards, and geodynamic processes. And if you compare those with those mentioned by Angelo before, the science, uh, let's say topics from IODP, you will see they're quite similar. So there's quite a lot of overlap and that's not, that's not a coincidence. There is, there's something behind. So IODP and ICDP, we are already working very closely together in the field of outreach, but also in the field of science. Angelo mentioned already the land to sea drilling proposals. And we have also some other projects. And once, once that is mentioned was for instance, the Chicxulub project offshore uh, Yucatan and where IODP and ICDP also worked together and supported drilling together in order to get those samples from the, from the impact structure. And due to the limited time now, I don't want to go into the other topics like georesources, geohazards, and uh, geodynamic processes, but I would like to focus on the environmental change because of course here with pages, past during, uh, global changes, I think this is uh, something that, that environmental change fits best. So I would like to show you a little bit more about the theme environmental change and also present some of the projects that we have conducted so far. So the questions that drive ICDP in this context are what can we learn from past greenhouse conditions in Earth's climate to better anticipate future changes uh, in the hydrological cycle? What is the role of the subsurface biosphere in controlling biochemical fluxes and carbon cycling? How was a hominid dispersal pushed or pulled by environmental changes along the migration path from origin to destination? And how do Achaean rocks archive deep time earth surface processes and their interaction with the early atmosphere? And here you have an overview about all scientific drilling projects uh, supported by the ICDP. These are all the dots here. And these magenta dots are all those projects that are focusing on paleoclimate. And you see a lot of them starting with an L. L stands for lake. So there's a lot of lake drilling that we are providing here and that we're supporting here. But with these lake drillings, that's, that's one of the key, uh, let's say one of the important uh, targets in the environmental change uh, topic here. But we also have some other projects also dealing with environmental change that reach further back in time. And if you see here, for instance, on top, the far deep project that drills 2.5 billion years old strata to understand the, uh, let's say the great oxidation events and uh, those things happening in changing the composition of the atmosphere some 2.5 billion years ago. Currently, we have a project running in the Barberton in South, America, South Africa that reached even further back in time. And the strata we're drilling here is 3.2 billion years old. So it's even older. And you see, we have some others here that dealing with, with, with Mesozoic strata, like the JET project here that deals with early Jurassic uh, strata. The same here in the Songliao Basin in China. Also here, Jurassic strata is the target. Uh, the PVOLC project, by the way, those were written in italics here. These are the ones which are in the pipeline now for this year. So the PVOLC, for instance, here in Denmark will drill Paleocene, Eocene, Thermal Maximum uh, uh, sediments. 
to understand the paleocene is eocene thermal maximum. We have the Trans Amazon here in the pipeline that will start in early 2023. They're going to drill along the Amazon River and intersect to understand better the processes there. And we have also Lake Namso here in the Tibetan Plateau. It's another lake drilling project that's also in the pipeline. So you see that environmental change is a highly important topic in the portfolio of the ICDP. And uh, just mention here again that one spot here that should there should actually be another spot that is for for the Chicxulub project that was a kind of a cooperation project between IODP, but also ICDP was involved in that by providing some funds. And because the Barbatan project is running right now, I just want to show you a little bit about the Barbatan project. So. There are eight boreholes to be drilled. Actually, you see just seven spots here. There's an eight one on the way uh, to drill into Precambrian sedimentary strata in the Barbatan Greenstone Belt in South Africa. And as I mentioned already, the age of the strata is 3.2 billion years old. And so the drilled sediments are among the oldest well-preserved shallow water strata in the world, so-called Moody's group, which uh, incidentally also contains evidence for very early life because they're also so-called microbiome maps. And uh, it's also an UNESCO World Heritage Site. And just to show you here, you've seen those big drilling ships from the IODP. You can also drill with a little bit smaller equipment if, if possible. And you see here that they're drilling with this relatively small rig for continuous coring here in South Africa in the Barbatan Greenstone Belt. We have an extensive outreach program there. So we have pupils that are invited to a visitor center. And you see here the outreach manager from the project explaining how a drill core looks like and what can be done with a drill core, and what you can learn from drill core. There's even more, there's vlogging going on, there is media interaction. So they make interviews with local TV and radio stations. They have a YouTube channel. There are some YouTube videos also available. So please check at the YouTube uh, ICDP at ICDP under YouTube and you will find those those links to the to the project here to the to their YouTube uh, videos so let's now go a little bit on how ICDP supports continental scientific drilling so i mentioned already that those member countries they pay an annual fee and this is in the range of, in total, something like $3.5 million. And from this $3.5 million, more than $3 million are provided for drilling operations. So we provide money for drilling. We provide service and equipment. So if you are running an ICDP project and you need, for instance, downhaul logging, we can do the downhaul logging for you. We can provide instruments for core studies like multi-sensor core logger, core scanner, and other equipment. We have a data and sample management system that we can provide. We also have the open access journal scientific drilling that I will mention in a minute, a little bit more in detail. We are providing and helping you with your outreach. We are providing training courses, also more about that in a minute, and also scientific cooperation and capacity building. What we as ICDP do not do, we do not provide funds for science. So if you have a handful of dual core from ICDP projects and you need a new, I don't know, stable isotope mass spectrometer, please do not ask us. We do not have the money for that because drilling is really expensive. And from the budget that we have, we have to spend everything, almost everything for drilling. So Funding for ICDP-related science is provided by the national and international funding agencies. So please contact your national funding agencies. I mentioned some of them, like NSF, Department of Energy, the German Research Foundation. But most countries, most ICDP member countries, have their own funding structure to support the science. So they often have a national ICDP office that you should contact in order to get money to support your science. You should consider that these funding organizations, they pay the ICDP membership fee, 
But of course, they want to see their scientists being active in ICDP projects. So for them, it wouldn't make sense to provide on the one hand the membership fee, and on the other hand, do not provide you the money to do the science. So there's always a good possibility to get money for science from these national, uh, let's say, offices of the national funding agencies. We, as ICDP, we cannot provide the money for science, as you see here on the, little, on the, on the right side on the photo. That would uh, overload our burden. Um, the instrumental pool, so you coming from an ICDP member country and having an ICDP project on hand can request the equipment that I mentioned before. We have tools and equipment also for drilling, for data management, for downhole logging, for multi-sensor core logging, other core studies, and so on and so forth. This is just an overview on what kind of equipment we're providing. I'm knowing, not going too much in detail here. You see me here in my, in my uh, young ages here, some 20 years ago, running some gas monitoring. And that's how I went, went uh, involved into the ICDP. I did this gas monitoring at several ICDP sites and also by on one IODP site on the GQ. So I was also once involved in IODP drilling some 10 years ago. So we have slim hole probes and so on. We have geophone sons and geophone chain. We have a multi-sensor core logger, the data management equipment. We have a back lab that's not owned by ICDP, but our institute, and we can make it available for you, which is specified on, on deep biosphere studies and the gas monitoring here and some other stuff. There's even more. So how can you get involved in ICDP? And in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna start at the, let's say, easiest way or the most simple way to get involved into ICDP. A very simple way to get involved is as an on-site person, as an on-site trainee to work at the drill site. And you can see the lady here on the photo on the bottom, she's working on cuttings. She's cleaning the cuttings. She, she's taking the cuttings from the rig floor, as you can see here. And then she's cleaning the cuttings. And that was her first touch with ICDP. Now she's actually also working for ICDP. And the funny thing is I saw her also here in, uh, with, 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 uh, with the attendees here. So she's also listening to the presentation right now. Volunteers are always needed on scientific drill sites. And if you are interested, check our website on running an upcoming project and contact the principal investigators. Just send them an email. Look, that's my name, that's my background. I would be interested to serve as a volunteer for your project. Is there any chance for me that I can get involved? That's the way she did it. And now she's working for ICDP at the end. So become a drill site volunteer and gain experience in scientific drilling. We have the training courses. The annual training courses are intended for graduate students, scientists, and engineers. And these training courses cover almost every aspect on continental scientific drilling. Starts with project planning and management, management pre-site surveys, drilling engineering, sample handling and storage, on-site studies, donor logging, data management, post-drilling measures, and some, some others. And important is to know that these are always Training courses will have a very strong component of practical experience, practical exercises. So we're going to do the training courses either on running ICDP drill sites on some other running IC, uh, drill sites, not necessarily ICDP. But it's important that you see drilling in action in order to learn what goes on. And ICDP uh, applicants from ICDP member countries and upcoming ICDP drilling are preferentially selected for the training courses. The cost for the training, including travel, accommodation, meals, and so on and so forth, are fully covered by ICDP. You don't have to pay a single coin. We had training courses, people came, and they left the training course with the same money in their pocket. They didn't pay a single euro or dollar. And the next training course will be in late September, and it will be at the KTB site, because the KTB site, it's not active anymore, but there is a geo a kind of geoscience museum 
that we can use and we can see all the equipment there. We can have hands-on exper experiments with the equipment. So KTB site is an always a good site to see drilling and drilling equipment. And we probably also make a one-day tour to see a real drilling and ongoing drilling from the KTB site. The call to apply will be released in April with the ICDP newsletter, but you can also see it on our ICDP website and our social media. We have a LinkedIn channel, we have a YouTube channel, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. A little bit higher the level would be to become an ICDP science team member. The science team members and the principal investigators, the PIs, they are the, let's say, scientific backbone of any ICDP project. They have the preferred access to samples and to data to conduct their research. And uh, again, ICDB funds only operational costs, no costs for science, I mentioned it already. And, but costs for science is funded by the national funding agencies. And often the principal investigators have PhD or postdocs positions available for you. So please go to the ICDB website. And if you find a project where you said, wow, that's something I'm really interested in, contact the principal investigator and ask how to get involved. And for the ICDP workshops, we have calls in the EOS, the ICDP website, and also in the ICDP social media. That's also a great opportunity to get involved in ICDP projects. And right now we have, hold on, I want to show you, well, it's not shown here. Anyway, we have right now two calls for ICDP workshops in the pipeline. They are both in Africa, the workshops. Uh, one is about Lake Victoria, and the other one is about uh, um, Tanganyika Basin, and they're both dealing with paleoclimate uh, issues. So the deadline has already passed, but you can still contact the principal investigators and ask if there's any chance to get involved. And as a scientist, the highest level to get involved is as principal investigator. So proposals to be submitted to ICDP can only be submitted by principal investigators, PIs. And <clears throat> actually it's a several step process to so starting with a pre-proposal. Once this is accepted, you can submit a workshop proposal. And at the end, you submit a full proposal. And I mentioned at the beginning, the PIs have the full control, but also the full responsibility over their drilling project. And the PI teams are requested to always consider early career scientists in the PI team. So if you would say, well, I'm an early career scientist, but there are all these, these alpha males who are doing the PIs, that's not the case. We are looking for gender balance and we're also looking for to include early career scientists also in positions having responsibility. And if you go to the ICDP website, for instance, you have to go to the website and here under projects, you find the names of the principal investigators. If you want to get in touch with them, you find the emails, get in touch with them and ask them, is there any chance for me to get involved in your project? as a volunteer, as a scientist, whatever. Knowledge transfer is another thing that we are providing. We are not doing so much our own science. Our job is more to help you to do your science, but uh, we do a little bit science in the field of gas monitoring. And that's a little bit my personal hobby. So I like to, let's say, uh, teach people who are interested in gas monitoring to run an experiment. And the idea is that we are running this experiment together. If you have any problems, I come, come along to help you. But you, as the scientist, you operate the experiment. And at the end, we have papers together. So you see the paper here with all these Indian colleagues. And I'm also somewhere. And so the idea is, at the end, from the planning about doing the experiment until the scientific, uh, the scientific publications, to do that together. I mentioned the ICDP IODP journal scientific drilling. 
this is designed to enhance the communication between and among IODP and ICDP and other scientific drilling communities. We are publishing peer reviewed articles. It's an open access journal and there are no publication fees for authors. That's all paid by ICDP. So if you have to some, say something to the community in the field of scientific drilling, this is one way to do it. Open access, no publication fees. It's published by Copernicus on behalf of the ICDP. And you see in the editorial board, there are people from IODP, but also from ICDP. If you have any questions, contact us. Our job is to get you involved into ICDP. So our job is to help PIs and proposal organization and management to help workshops, organizing workshops in engineering issues, in developing drilling concept, getting quotes from contractors, data management, training, outreach, dissemination, developing costs and budget plans, providing service and equipment, downhole logging and technical services. And with my last slide, I just want to make sure that you understand one thing here. If you as the scientific community do not submit proposals to ICDP, may it be an application for a training course, an application for a workshop, a workshop proposal and, and so on and so forth. There are, if you don't do that, there are no scientific drilling projects. And if there are no scientific drilling projects, there is no need for ICDP because then the funding agencies will say, why do we spend money for a membership fee if there are no scientific drilling projects? So we as ICDP have a keen interest that you being involved and submit proposals to the ICDP. If you want to get involved, contact us. You see my name on the website. And we are doing, we try to do our best to get you involved into the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Again, okay, thank you, Angelo. And we have questions. Uh, the first one is from Damien that he asked, how can scientists from countries other than the PMO, Europe, Japan, China, India, well, that you mentioned, become more involved with IODP expeditions? Example, sailing. Um, yes. Uh, each uh, program um, or operators has uh, slightly different rules but in general at the moment only scientists belonging to um, countries who participate in IUDP can sail whether they are coming from the three um, platform operators so US Ecor Japan or additional members like the consortium China Korea um, India. Uh, so you're free to submit a proposal, but then you probably do not sail. Uh, the e -court for the future has already established that in the joint venture with uh, Japan, they will allow scientists from any country in the world to sail as co-chief scientists if they are the main proponents of a successful proposal. So a proposal written in any country, if it makes it through the uh, review process and becomes implemented, will accept a co-chief out of the quota because the participation is of course, roughly proportional to how much money each country puts in the program. This is, I guess, true with the space, the space station, with the uh, uh, other large programs of, of uh, scientific operations centered on, on, on the big infrastructures. In the, um, so, so for the future, there will be an opening, but for like say, participating as a scientist, I doubt it will be the case other than co-chief scientists. I mean, so the next question is also for you. Will there be a new multi-purpose vessels built oh. once, on the, once the joint resolution retires? Currently, only one Australian is allowed to participate in IODP cruise sailing 
Tro A N C I C. Will this change in the future? Thanks. Yeah, I guess this question is uh, is by someone from Australia. Yeah, or sorry, New it's from Udara. Okay, Australia or New Zealand, I guess. You no, know, because yes. of the reference to Zanzi. Uh, yeah, uh, what happens with the judge's resolution is something that NSF is uh, considering, and they have not uh, been able to decide uh, yet. So the only know the only thing we know is that if they pass some technical difficulties uh, and they find uh, the funding, the ship could be continued uh, another three years after 2024, maybe with different conditions, but nobody knows. They, they reserve the right uh, to tell the community when they are sure of their decision. Um, in that case, there will not be another vessel like that uh, available for the program until maybe the NSF uh, will uh, provide another vessel, but it will be maybe 10 years or so. So we are quite confident that for some time, IODP will, we, we will have to run without a riserless drilling vessel like the resolution. So opportunities for other for scientists from ANZIC it will depend on, on how ANZIC will decide to continue. They may continue being uh, an independent uh, partner, paying a certain amount and therefore having access to one or two birds in one year, uh, or they may join one of the other program. That's up to, we've been in touch with the coordinator of ANZIC, uh, Sara, I forget her name, last name, uh, um, but they will also say this in a few months from now. Thank so you. Much. Well, uh, the next question, I think it's for Thomas. Uh, it's from Olumid, Olumide, sorry if I said that, but um, she said, oh, I'm studying paleo environment and change along the West African coast working from Nigeria, which is not in ICDP. How can we get involved? And Nick add to this, that can anyone from any country apply, apply for trainings and are any travel costs covered for the select participants? Okay, let me start with the training question because that's easy to answer. The answer is yes, because I saw there's another question in the chat, which also goes in that direction about how many sites were drilled in non-ICDP member countries. And uh, maybe I, I start to answer that question first. There was a question about what is the ratio between drilling in ICDP member country or the proportion of projects drilled in ICDP member countries versus not member countries. We are not just drilling in ICDP member countries because the geoscience does not ask for member country or not. So we have a lot of projects also running in non-ICDP member countries. Most of the projects in Africa, for instance, or in Mexico, or I, I don't know, we have a project in Indonesia. So they are not ICDP member countries. But of course, we cannot, the PIs cannot say, okay, I would like, like to drill in Indonesia. So I submit a proposal to the ICDP. Of course, these people, these PI groups, they must have a link to the local community, to the local geologists, of course, because otherwise they wouldn't get any permit, for instance. So if we are drilling or if ICDP projects drilling in different countries, um, we, well, they can drill or we drill in different countries, but it also means that we involve or include scientists from these countries also for this project. So, for instance, if there would be a project or drilling in Nigeria, in Nigeria, because the question was about Nigeria, another question was about Nigeria. Um, if you have a project or if there is an ICDP project in Nigeria in the pipeline, then you can definitely get in contact with the principal investigators to ask them, is there any chance for me to get involved? You can always ask also the PIs, if you're not from an ICDP member country, can I get involved in your project? The PIs have the full control, but also the full responsibility. They can say, okay, you are extremely well qualified. You're exactly the person that we need for our project here. 
please come and help us at the doorstep. The same for the training courses. I mentioned that people from ICDP member countries are preferentially selected. But if you have a support letter from a principal investigator who has written, look, this person is not from an ICDP member country, but she or he is extremely important at the site to do this and this and this and this. I have no argument to say, we do not invite you. We will invite you. It's at the end, okay, if, if there are two persons with the same qualification and one is coming from an ICDP member country, the other one is not coming from an ICDP member country, then I would probably choose the one with the ICDP member country background. But that should not hold you back from applying for the training course. We are also taking people from non-ICDP member countries. It always depends on your application. And if I see that your application is so fundamental for this project that it makes sense to invite you for the training course, we will invite you no matter if you're coming from an ICDP member country or not. Thank you, Thomas. So I think there are all the questions. Uh, Fernanda, mm -hmm. can I um, also reply to the question on uh, where the drilling is done sure. for IEDP? I want to take a, a minute about that. Yeah, sure. um, also, IEDP drills anywhere in the world, regardless of the country, whether the, the, the country is member or not, of course, Sometimes there are issues of per permits to drill, even if it is only for science, but they drill everywhere. One nice example is that at the end of this year, across the, the New Year's Eve, uh, the January, December and January, there will be a, a, the return after more than 20 years of the Joydis resolution in the Mediterranean Sea. They will drill in Greek water in the Aegean Sea to study the evolution of the Beckhart Basin, the volcanic uh, activity. And Greece is not part of ECORD. Um, so sometimes uh, the, the country hosting uh, uh, the drilling can ask uh, that one observer is uh, invited on board that is not a member of the science party, but can at least uh, be attached. And, and the, the proponents are having general, like Thomas said, uh, contact with the scientific community. Locally, they can request samples after one year from the drilling and they can become fully involved. They only are unable to participate in the cruise. Thank you. Uh, Thomas Angelo, something to add? Yes. I just Conclusion. saw this. One part of the question about the training courses was, and I didn't answer that, are there any travel costs covered for the selected participants? And for the ICDP, I can say it's all paid by us. It starts with the visa application. We, we pay you the bus travel to go to the embassy to pick up your visa. We pay the flights, we pay the, the accommodation, the meals, yes. it's all covered. Only if you want to drink a couple of beers, you <laughs> should pay that by yourself, but that's your private business. That's not our business anymore. That doesn't yeah. work on, on the drilling vessels because they are dry vessels. So the beer is only in port. <laughs> I speak um, about the training process here, but uh, not okay. about the flights. So. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, alcohol at the drill site, it's, it's actually, sorry, it's a no-go because yeah, uh, for a lot yeah. of reasons, but alcohol at the drill site, it, that, that's not yeah. good. It's not allowed. Yeah. yeah, I just want to add that I am testimonial of this training course and it is pretty awesome course because you can learn too much, not only from drilling, also as a scientific, the, how important it is to think in everything at the time to write a project. So it is a pretty amazing training course, the ICDP. So please take advantage of this. And thank you, Angelo. Thank you, Thomas, for this opportunity. As I told you before the start, uh, I don't know how many of the people that we are, but the people that are on YouTube, we're sure that almost many of them, we didn't know about IODP or ICDP opportunities. So I think this talk, it will be open the door for many of us as ECRs. We really hope so. And thank you to all the ECRs that are here. Uh, please continue thank with you very the much. webinars and all the 
opportunities that you can find in Pages ECN, not only the webinars, also the blog or everything that we have. Okay. And thank you. Thank you and bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye, Thomas. Ciao. Bye.